Have you ever thought about how we build contained fire? You may have heard about the magic one meter rule, but when you start to build within that magic one meter rule, you need to think about firewalls. Usually houses are built one meter apart from each other. But if you're on a five lot subdivision like this, or you're building close to the boundary within that one meter mark, you're going to need to install a firewall. I'm in lot four, there's a firewall on my left, there's a firewall on my right. When we installed them, we had to follow an FRR, or fire resistant rating. Let's jump into it. So first thing is FRR, fire resistant rating, and it's got three numbers. Normally you see it as 30, 30, 30, 60, 60, 60. It doesn't have to be all the same. The numbers relate to minutes, but there's three different categories. We've got structural adequacy, we've got integrity, and we've got insulation. So structural adequacy refers to the load bearing capacity of the wall. This side's not load bearing because the truss goes from there all the way to there, but there's a load bearing wall on the other side of all these firewalls, and that load bearing wall needs to stand up to 60 minutes of fire. In the slab, we've had to put a crack join, and in the roof, we've had to cut all the purlins on the firewall line. And the idea of that is if this unit here caught fire, everything would collapse into this unit and would burn, and it would take more than 60 minutes for it to spread to the other side, and that's enough time for the New Zealand Fire Service, cheers guys, keep up the good work, to come to this unit, put it out, and it contains the damage to either side. So structural adequacy is number one, needs to be able to stand up. Basically it needs to maintain its structural load bearing capacity for more than the time described. For example, that gives it a certain amount of time before the stud burns through and it can no longer support the wall or the cladding on the outside. The next thing is integrity. By integrity, we mean the ability to resist flames going through to the other side. If we talk about structural, it's the load bearing capacity. Integrity is the ability to withstand flames, vapors, gas going through for that same amount of time. So that's not only like the thickness and type of product you're using, but no gap, no ear movement from one side to the other. You've got to seal everything all the way even up to the top. We've used like mineral insulation. When you line the wall, you may need to use a special glue and a seal. You may need to use a special jib board. Imagine a fire resistant door. It has a zero rating of structural adequacy, but it has an integrity rating of resisting flames going through the doorway for a certain amount of time. And also that door will be sealed around so that it doesn't let smoke go through, it doesn't let vapors or gas go through. That's what integrity is. So that's an important thing to note. The FRR can be different numbers. It could be zero, 30, zero. And that's a great example of a fire rated door. So different elements of your build can have different FRRs as well to achieve the overall fire rating. So then we come to the last part is the insulation. Now insulation means if there's a fire on the unit next door, that for at least 60 minutes, or whatever number you're referring to in your FRR, it doesn't get to the point where stuff on the other side catches fire. And they do all this testing in brands in a big furnace, right? And they hold stuff up to the furnace door, and what you're seeing is how long can I hold it there at the door before it bursts into flame spontaneously on the other side? So the most common intervals are 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes, 180 minutes. And the gold standard, 240 minutes. So it can burn for four hours before it starts to affect the other side. I think it's also important to note that even if it gets 89 minutes and it fails, it would then be in the 60 minute category. 
So there's a couple of different products we've used as firewalls. We've used the jib system. So that's not only like a firewall jib, you can use in between intertenancy walls. Jib has a product. It's like a 30 mil plasterboard product, sits in a channel, screwed together. You can use Hebel, you can use Korok. This is Korok here. It is aerated concrete product sandwiched between two sheets of metal. You can then also use Hardy's on the Y42 subdivision. We built a garage right next to the boundary and that had to have a non-combustible cladding. Everything within a meter had to be lined. We used Titan board on that job and we used RAB and we used JIP. And so that's another great example where it's not just one thing, but a combination of things produce the overall system. Now that'll all be explained in your plans, in your consented docs. That's something that gets picked up at the planning and building consent phase. A again, it comes to that one meter magic rule. So for example, this house is less than one meter away from from that house. It's right on the other side of this wall here. So this wall here has to be a firewall, but it can also be in garages. It can also be in homes. When you're building really close to a boundary, there's lots of examples where that happens.